The oceans are the source of life. We depend on them for our very survival. As I think is increasingly well known now, um, every breath we take, um, every drop of water we drink connects us to the oceans. And if our um, if, if we allow this decline that is continuing, that has been accelerating really in, in since the Industrial Revolution, but especially in the last decades, to continue, we will be left without that life support system. It is the blue heart of our planet, and we are all working together um, to try to promote awareness among governments, businesses, the private sector. Um, Ex uh, amplify the voices of NGOs that have been working in this field and also reach consumers as you are. Um, there are steps that can be taken and need to be taken by all of these groups in order for us to succeed. So, the, the, I mean, there's problems of acidification, of ocean warming, of overfishing, and there's plastics. I mean, all of those really resulting from human activity of one kind or another. That is true. That is true. And um, it, it, it is changing the nature of the oceans themselves. The, the, it is um, destroying uh, marine ecosystems. We've lost half of the wildlife of the oceans, half of the coral reefs um, in the oceans. We have now 400 dead zones in the oceans. And of course, we have the five massive plastic gyres in the oceans that um, are an are a plastic soup, really, that is becoming more and more deadly to the fish that know no borders, the fish that are polluted in, mm. in Europe or in Africa or in the United yeah. States are, are making their way in their annual migrations um, and c could end up on your plate or the plate of anyone who uh, eats seafood today. I mean, I mean, the problem is, you know, plastic is cheap, lightweight, durable. True. How can we do without it? Well, there is a lot of um, work going into that. You have to address the full life cycle of plastics from sort of oil extraction to their design and, and, and packaging and to the end, uh, you know, end life of, of the plastics. And a lot of tech Increasingly, tech companies are looking at this, um, and you have businesses beginning to look at how, um, how, how they can rethink, redesign, repackage, move away from single-use plastics into more uh, uh, you know, flexible. And, and, and anyway, th this is an example of an approach Reusable. that a consumer can take. Businesses can take approaches that begin with the beginning of the use of, of their development of products. And governments really need to work on plastic reduction policies um, as well. Plastics in a country such as yours, which is not a coastal country, I mean. That, I was uh, going to say that the Middle East is the other area I know about. And in the Middle East, we have small, a small country, for example, that is the fourth largest plastic bottle consumer in the world. And another one which is considered after the United States to be the largest plastic bag consumer. These are hard for me to believe, these figures, because these are relatively small countries. But we have, I think it is 30-something percent more than the, the world average of plastic pollution in our region. So governments are starting, as many governments around the world have come late to this, but are starting to you know, look at non-biodegradable plastics as being, and, and looking at the production and requiring the production of biodegradable bags, plastic bags. For the interim, I suppose that's a good solution. I think for the, for the long term, one has to move away from from that uh, because still oil and petroleum products are going into the creation of every kind of plastic, as I understand it, and I'm not an expert, but that is a serious problem for our part of the world as well. I mean, in, in the question of global warming to a certain extent, to get some movement on that, in the end it took America and China to come together and, and, and lead the world. Uh, the last Secretary of State, John Kerry, made oceans very much part of his campaigning. The and a great deal was accomplished. The yeah. um, new administration kind of not so much. Mm. So, so can it be done without America? Well, the ocean elders, among others, are going to work very hard to hold on to the progress that's been made. By the way, the UK, by 2020, should have four kilometers, uh, of four million kilometers of marine protected areas 
um, that it oversees in its, in its overseas territories. So that is um, a, 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 a very strong you know, commitment on the part of this government. In the U.S., the Arctic ban, you know, President Obama's ban on Arctic drilling, the increase of the marine protected monument around Hawaii, which I think is the largest in the world, um, and, and other advances that were made as well as on the international level. These are very important um, and, and heartening uh, bits of progress, but they are bits if you look at sure. the whole picture. And we just have to protect those and maintain the momentum. The, the policymakers who c insist on looking at short term, often, I don't want to say it's always the case, but profit over the long term welfare and well being of their children and their children are also not understanding that there are no borders in the oceans. There is no way that you can build a gated community that, with all the wealth in the world that will protect you from the effects of the decline of ecosystems in the oceans. They also protect coastal areas from, from uh, you know, the effects of hurricanes and massive storms, as well as being a source of food on, on your plate and also having an impact on the carbon you know, it, the ocean is a carbon sink, so, so it has an impact on climate change. So if there's one thing we can all do about this problem, what would it be? Consumers can do what my family and I and so many uh, yeah. of you all yeah. are, are doing today, which is we can change our habits. There are some microplastics, which we haven't had a chance to talk about, um, are, are such a foul source of toxicity in our oceans, in our food, as it comes to us from the oceans. And it isn't that difficult to find alternatives to plastic bottles that are so common today and are land-based litter is the 80% of the litter that ends up in the ocean. It's come from land. And that's where we need to start in terms of, of, of looking at whether it's cosmetics or, or, or just the, um, the, the articles you use in your bathrooms and Q-tips. Uh, I, I, I have organic Q-tips now that don't have the plastic uh, handle because that's what I grew up with, the plastic handled ones. An enormous amount of plastic that ends up being consumed and then tossed and inevitably ends up in our waters and in our food. Um, and, uh, you know, there are many other ways. You can actually even, this is probably pushing it a bit, look into the synthetics in your clothing and make sure that you're trying to um, purchase clothing that is um, as you know that is has fewer of the types of plastics incorporated into it that break down every time you wash them in the washing machine and end up in the water. So there are many different things. It takes a little bit of research, but take the time because it's worth it. The impact that collectively we can have can be pretty phenomenal.